Hi everyone, it's Tom. Welcome to video number 36 in the IC7300 from A to Z series. Today we're going to cover one final piece of CW operation with the rig. But first, I'd like to send a shout out to another YouTuber. I'd like to thank David Kassler, KE0OG, for mentioning my channel during his live stream last night. David has produced video study guides for the technician, general, and extra exams, along with many videos on other ham radio topics. His channel's URL is listed below, and there's a link to it in the description for this video. I also want to comment briefly about the growing list of ham radio and technology YouTubers out there. I don't view any of us as competing with each other. Even when several people create a video on the same topic, I believe it is valuable to the community. Everybody learns a little differently. I might explain something in a way that you find much more clear, or maybe much less clear, than the way somebody else explains it. The important thing is that you can find a teaching style that works for you. I believe that the more people we have out there promoting ham radio, technology, and education, the better off everyone will be. That's my soapbox for tonight. Now, let's get to that final CW segment. We're going to take a look at one final function on the CW part of the rig, and that is something called CW Reverse. The way that the side tone is generated for CW is that the rig internally creates what's called a beat frequency oscillator. And when you set your CW pitch to a frequency, say 750 hertz in this case, then when you tune to a CW signal and you have that signal right when you're centered right on that signal, and I've got some noise and junk here on 40 meters right now. Um, let see if we can find a little cleaner one. When you tune right to that signal, the way that the side tone is generated is the beat frequency oscillator is sort of an internal carrier that the radio generates that's 750 hertz away from the center or whatever tone you've selected. Now, it could be 750 hertz away below it or above it. The default is to put it on the lower sideband or below the frequency of the carrier. Let's take a look at how you set that. If you go into Menu, and then you pick the Set function, and then you pick Function. And I have it already up here, but we'll go up to the top of the screen so there's eight pages of function settings and it is actually down on page six CW normal side and it's set to lower sideband that's the default you can change it to upper sideband but we're gonna leave it lower for now uh, if you do want to change it this is where you would do that so we'll get all the way out of these menus and I apologize I'm getting some noise here on 40 meters. I have a lot of local noise at certain times of the evening. Ah, and we might be able to use this example. So here's a, well, he stopped sending. We had a guy sending CW, and somebody was tuning up here just above him, and you can hear him. So as I, I'm sorry, let me, we may be editing out some of this as I tune around. Okay, so here's somebody sending. As I go up in frequency, I'm going further away from that beat frequency oscillator, so the tone is going up, so it's getting higher and higher. It's 750 hertz if I'm right on it, and it gets higher as I go up. Now, let's suppose for a minute that you were copying a station here, and I apologize, I don't have a pair of stations on frequency that are um, near each other, causing interference, um, and I may not even have a pair of stations anywhere, and there's still radio teletype all the way down here from the CW Worldwide uh, RIDI contest. 
Hopefully we'll find somebody doing CW here. Okay, here we have a, somebody sending CW. Let's say you were copying a guy here, and there was another station right here that is below where you are, and he's on the his his tone is higher, so you can hear him and the station you're copying. And of course, that stopped. Let's pick this guy, and he stopped. Story of my life. So, here's a guy sending, and let's say I had an interfering station right here. If I change to CW reverse, it puts the beat frequency oscillator on the other side, and watch what happens. You notice the tone got much, much lower for the brief second that you heard it, because it, it put that CW tone, or CW signal, here we go. So, again, we'll put him up here, and then if I go to reverse, and I tune him just a little further away, he virtually disappears. And if I go back to normal, you can hear him. Now, of course, you can use filters and other things on this rig to narrow him out, but if you like to keep the filter wide so you can hear other signals, and this guy's bothering you while you're copying... Oh, there we go. While we're copying this guy, who's pretty close. If, if I just go to CW reverse, this gets to be much lower because it's very close to that beat frequency, and you can actually zero beat it so that so that it virtually disappears so again CW reverse just switches the side of the beat frequency oscillator and you can use that as another means of getting rid of interference and with that I think we have covered everything for CW for this rig that at least I can think of or have come across so far I think that about covers it for the CW functions. Next time, we'll start on the RIDI or RTTY functions. If you find these videos useful, please click on the like button, and I'm always happy to see comments if you have any corrections, suggestions, or questions. If you find my channel useful and you want to be notified when more videos come out, please consider subscribing. One way to do that is by clicking on the icon that'll pop up in the lower right hand corner at the end of this video, or you can just click the subscribe button on the channel page. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.